Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the end of the subspecies franchise proper here on Full Moon Fridays. My name is Matthew. <laughs> Joining me, someone who is incredibly excited for this episode of, of subspecies because uh, it's a man who loves his prequels. Um, he's been a huge fan of this franchise thus far. Steve. What a shit show. <laughs> this this <laughs> franchise is awful, and I feel like your nostalgia is lying to you. I like the first two movies. <laughs> Nothing since. Uh, I mean, I can't vouch for anything since, and I, I like the style of the first two movies, and I will say that. But yes, we've arrived. Uh, Subspecies 5, Blood Rise. Out of the Dark Ages. A child was born. Crusaders stole the cursed child. The creature grew to manhood. He was trained in the arts of war. Sworn into a secret sect. We have come for the Bloodstone. What is your name? Radu. It is here. Redis Lass is your father. Spare my child. Don't listen to the lies of demons. All that is his can be yours. She spoke the truth, Marev. She's a vampire. She is becoming one. You must never leave me, Radu. Unto eternity. What's happened? I'm defiant. You are not our master. You have so much to learn. Life or death, this choice is yours. This came out this year, so I think the last one we watched, Bloodstone, or The Awakening, or whatever it was called, that was back in 1998. Years ago. So, yes, so then they came back, they brought back Denise Duff, they brought back Anders Hove, um, and they're like, you know what, the subspecies tale has not been told completely yet. What we need is to take these characters and send them back. And tell the whole story of how Radu became Radu, and and that'll get the the fans excited. Won't it be exciting, Steve? Weren't you? Were, where were you at? Were you super excited to see where this was going to go and how it was going to wrap up all the plot holes that you had correctly pointed out for the past four weeks? No, it's a prequel. It basically like can't wrap up any plot holes. Like everything, everything's already happened. Uh, yeah, I was, I was not excited for this at all like I, as you said like i i don't care about prequels i always want a story to be moving forward and i feel like anytime you make a prequel you are telling me that you were out of ideas on how to continue from where you left off uh and that brings us to now with subspecies five and they should have called it like subspecies zero or something because calling it five just like completely fucks things chronologically confused as yeah a video game nerd would say yeah, and I think what I was most excited for with this is trying to find out, okay, so why is the Bloodstone so damn important? Like, what <laughs> that, is so important about the Bloodstone? And you can't let it go now. I have destroyed... It's absolutely true. I destroyed your, uh, a small part of your uh, subspecies fandom. 
You have. You have. I mean, I'm not even going to debate that because I never really considered the Bloodstone. I just assumed it was this great thing and never thought about it until you came about, uh, came around and shattered my preconceptions of what I thought of this franchise. So I was actually looking forward to, are they actually going to talk about the lore of the Bloodstone? Are we going to learn more about what the subspecies are? You know, all of that kind of stuff. That's what I was looking for. It didn't need to be great. I'm not expecting, you know, a fantastic movie by any means, but I was at least hoping that it was going to answer some of these burning questions that had arisen from the first four films that we've watched. And I guess we'll talk about it now as to whether or not uh, they answered those questions. So, Steve, um, I'm, you know, I feel bad putting all this useless knowledge of subspecies into your brain and... All right, folks, there were some minor technical issues right there on my end. I apologize for that, but we're back. And I think where I left off, Steve, was we are about to find out whether or not Subspecies 5 Blood Rise gave us the answers to all the burning questions that we have had with this franchise for the first four movies. So take it away. What happens in this one? All right. Uh, so the movie, the, the entire movie is narr- narrated by Radu. It is a prequel showing his time uh, before he became a vampire, which was news to me. I, I thought he was just born a vampire because his dad was a vampire. Uh, but apparently that's not how it works in the subspecies world. But Well, uh, to be fair, does that work at all? Have you ever seen a movie in which a dude bangs a vampire or a woman bangs a vampire and then she gives birth to a vampire baby? I... You know, I don't know. I, I think I was I had it in my head that uh, like I was thinking of like Blade, like Blade's mom gets bitten by a vampire while she's pregnant. And so like she is a vampire and gives birth to a vampire. I, I assumed it would work the other way, but apparently not. Apparently I've understand I've understood well, uh, vampire biology completely wrong throughout this. Entire well, they did series. establish they did establish in part two that mummy is not a vampire. Yeah. But this fits was. with the lore. Okay, uh, we'll go with that. Uh, Radu was born he, born human-ish. The first scene of the movie is uh, Mummy, who who apparently is now named Cersei. Was she ever named previously? Like, I only remember her no. being, hearing her be called Mummy. All right, well, her name is Cersei. And so Cersei is popping a squat and just immediately shits out baby Radu. And baby Radu is like a little goblin creature uh it's six, like, it's six, just, six demon child yes, energy there yes it's definitely. clearly a, a a fake baby just flopping around <laughs> and as soon like seconds after she gives birth she's holding the baby for the first time like in comes these crusaders and the crusaders uh stake her and steal the baby and like cersei's not dead like she is immortal and so she's she's just kind of laughing while the this giant like cro- this giant staff stake cross thing is shoved in her and then they the the crusaders just like take the baby radu and, and flee and cersei's just like whatever and just pulls the stake out and, and goes right back goes right along so the- weird uh, so weird and so then we see like what happens with radu well it turns out they they chopped off all of his creepy witch fingers which apparently have nothing to do with him being a vampire that was his his human-ish form already had the witch fingers and, it's weird genetics. Cersei yes, and the vampire yeah, it, just created a weird goblin baby. By his bloodline. Um, but they, they chop off his witch fingers and like cut off the tips of his ears and they like slather his face in oil. And this apparently <laughs> lets him have a, a human appearance. And so uh, Radu is then adopted by the church and he is turned into a vampire hunter. Um, and at this point, like, I'm super interested. It's like, okay, like a movie where like vampire Radu is hunting other vampires. I can work with that. I'll, I'll give that a chance. Um, that immediately is gone in the first five minutes of the movie because Ra- <laughs> Radu, like who like seven, we just like this movie flashes forward in time repeatedly. And so we see, yeah. we see baby Radu. And the next time we see Radu, he's like an old man, like in the sixties or seventies. Uh, but he is a crusader. He is completely human-ish. He is not a vampire. He uh, still has normal human fingers yeah. with fingernails. I, did, did they I never didn't... grow back? I, I don't know. Uh, I, again, apparently, I, I flunked vampire biology, clearly. Uh, so he's just, he's passing for human. He's lived as a human. He is now a vampire hunter. Uh, he breaks into his dad's castle. He doesn't know this is his dad yet, but he breaks into King Vladislaus's castle. Uh, and when they break in, 
king like daddy vampire and cersei are both just sitting there like enjoying a a a woman drink drinking her blood and uh, you know always yeah. drinking topless women in yeah. the subs piece the, the, the I, blood I mean, doesn't flow unless the girls that. are out yes. uh so he's you know the king vladislaus who looks nothing like uh the tall man from uh, uh from yeah. the, the original movie he's Dude very turns like into angus uh, scrim yeah he, he's very like you know monster vampire at this point as opposed to like human with fangs so this very monstery vampire king uh king daddy is drinking a woman's blood cersei's just kind of there hanging out with them and in comes radu and his crew and uh king vladislav is like oh you're my kid uh and then and then daddy vampire and mommy cersei kill everyone except radu and his radu's buddy whose name is like marius or something like that and marius is like don't listen to him like you know they're they're, they're, they're telling you lies and 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 radu's like no he's right that's my dad don't listen to the lies of demons he spoke the truth marius and Radu just immediately believes, <laughs> believes. Him. Yeah. Uh, uh, so they they ultimately like, they, they 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 chase off Daddy Vampire and um and and Mummy, and they go to the basement. It's just uh it's just Radu and Marius left. Everyone that came with them, everyone else that came with them is dead. And they go to the basement and they find Denise Duff, who does not play uh Michelle in this because that would be very strange. She instead plays Helena. Uh, uh, who is Stefan's mom, and so Radu meets Helena and Stefan, and Stefan, and Marius is like, just kill them, just, just fucking kill them. Like we have to cleanse this place, and Radu's like, nah, it, it'll be fine. Uh, this, this is this this is repeated throughout the whole franchise with people telling Radu, just kill them, get it over with, your your life will be better, and he always <laughs> says no, or he does not kill people no. again, again. I. Ted Nicolau wrote this one. Uh, I think he's written all of the films thus far. And I think, as we'll mention, script and story is not the strong suit of the subspecies movies. They yes. don't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, they are occasionally cool-looking nonsense. Uh, so, uh, Radu first, like, you know, checks uh, Denise, Duff's, Denise Duff's, what's her name? Duff? Duff. Whatever. Helena. He checks <laughs> Helena's neck and finds no bite marks. And so he, she's not bitten it's fine uh and so, she tells him oh i'm not bitten yeah you can trust me he hasn't uh, yeah, you found me in a vampire's basement like what are the odds i've been bitten zero is yeah. what i say uh <laughs> radu takes helena and and stefan and he and marius rescue them and they leave they start camping out and the helena starts like putting the moves on radu but he's not into it at first because he's a man of god and uh so weird uh uh Marius is like, I can't do this. Like, uh, you're, we should have killed these people. I cannot support you in their rescue. I have to leave. And so Marius takes off. Um, so now it's just the three of them, Radu, Stefan, and Helena. And um, the next morning, Stefan starts screaming about, like, the sun is hurting his eyes. And he's like, oh, he's a fucking vampire. No, it turns out that it was a fake out. It's just because he basically lived in that basement his entire life. The sun hurts him. Uh, but Helena is, is a different story. Like she's she's adamant she's adamant that she was never bitten by uh by King Daddy, but uh, she is like full on having like a seizure when exposed to sunlight. Like they they pull yeah. back the sheet and like her skin looks very. I, was her skin supposed to be gray or was that bad lighting? I don't know. She is having like a much more negative reaction to sunlight yeah. than um. And Radu's still dumb. Uh, he just he doesn't it's like he's not even processing what this i'm like how can he be so stupid your whole life is going around like killing vampires Presum presumably for the past 40 years or 50 however long it's been he's been going around killing vampires maybe he like seems to have no clue maybe we're we're on track with like the titties comment like he he meets denise duff and her the girls are covered up and she has no bite marks on her neck and so like those two things together it's impossible that she's been that bitten. makes sense yeah that uh, explains it so like another day goes by and uh, this time uh helena it successfully puts the moves on radu and he goes to he starts you know running his hand up her thigh 
And while, her, get, while Stefan's watching, while Stefan which I thought watching, was very creepy. <laughs> and, and he recognizes, he recognizes that Stefan is his brother. So he's about to break, mm-hmm. he's about to bang his half brother's mom. Uh, yeah, right in front. Uh, and his half brother's a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they're it's about weird. to expose Stefan to some shit. He's going to need some serious vampire therapy. Uh, but Radu go, starts like sliding his hand up Helena's thigh. And then we see something like, I don't know. Like, is this supposed to be a, bite because it looks like she has some terrible burn or rash on her thigh Uh, i think it's supposed to be a bite and it's all infected or something okay that's how i took it well she has something approximating a bite on her inner thigh and now radu is like fuck like she's definitely a vampire but he continues to protect her uh continues to protect her uh until like another night they they, he gives her the bloodstone it's like here drink this so you will be satiated so he's fully aware that she is a vampire yeah, and so they continue to travel together, and then one night, uh, Helena ag- again goes to put the moves on Radu and convinces him to drink from the Bloodstone. He's not a vampire at this point, uh, but she she convinces him to drink from it, and then she gives in to her bloodlust and bites Radu and turns Radu into a vampire. Uh, immediately- so, what would the Bloodstone have? What What does it do for Radu when he's not a vampire? So, like somebody drinks from the Bloodstone who's not a vampire, are they just drinking blood? Blood for the hell of it? Because it's not like it would make more sense to me, at least, if she turned him somehow and then was like, "You must drink from this Bloodstone to get super powerful and blah blah blah, like more powerful than a normal vampire." You drink from this, but no, she has him drink from it first, and then he's just kind of like. Tastes good, and then she and then she, she bites him out on him and turns That's... Radu. And as soon as she turns Radu, uh, King Daddy shows back up and and uh, kidnaps her and uh, kidnaps her and Stefan and takes them away. And uh, I think they he tells uh, he, I think King Daddy tells Radu that without a master vampire teaching you the ways of us, you will just like perish. Uh, yeah. So Radu is now turned. Uh, King Daddy, Stefan, and Helena are gone. And uh, Radu tracks down Marius and tries to convince Marius to kill him. And Marius is like, you know, they're they're crying. It's clear that the two of them are very close. Uh, but ultimately, like, Marius is like, this has to be done. And so he stakes Radu. Uh, but then he stakes Radu. And then he's immediately speared in the back by Mummy Cersei. And Mummy Cersei takes Radu, and like Mummy Cersei now is going to teach Radu magic. Uh, <laughs> a lot of just things showing up suddenly. Yes, in this I mean, movie. To be fair, they... like this movie takes place over what seems to be several hundred years. Like they shit yeah. just kind of has to happen to move things along. Uh, but we get like a training montage where uh, Mummy Cersei uh, uh, teaches Radu all of the magic that he learns, uh, like the ability to teleport. She teaches, she teaches Radu how to summon creatures, and you're thinking, oh, are we going to see the little subspecies creatures? Nope, we just see, like, monster shadows on the wall. They didn't have the budget for the little subspecies creatures. Um, but then some time passes, and Radu is like, I've had enough of this. I want to go be my own person, and uh, grabs a knife, stabs Mummy Cersei, and flees. And Mummy Cersei's like, you're banished from here. You can never come back, which I think was done to tie into the fact that it, in part two... Mummy yep. Cersei's like, you were banished. And Radu's like, and then they just let it go. <laughs> it's all coming back around, Steve. <laughs> See, it's all tying together. Uh, so now Radu is on his own. Uh, he, he, he's, he's very lonely. He hates his, his isolation and solitude. He, uh, he just kind of bums around for a little bit, uh, moves into like the cellar of Daddy's castle, and Daddy's not there for some reason. And then he comes across Ash and Ariel. Now, Ar- now Ash, we've seen in the subspecies four. He's also apparently the main character of Vampire Journals or Diaries, whatever it's called. I've still never seen that. Uh, I guess that's going to be the next movie we do. Um, and so uh, uh, Ash and Ariel, they're brother and sisters, and they play music. And uh, Radu loves this music. He wants to turn them, and, and you know he will give them immortality and magic vampire powers. And in return, they will like be his companions and play music for him for forever. <laughs> uh, you know, fair trade. <laughs> so she plays a mean flute. <laughs> yeah, she has this weird like two part flute. I don't know. I'm not a music yeah. person. Uh, she plays a flute, and he plays like the piano or uh, p- the piano, and also some sort of like harp 
string instrument of some sort. I'm just going to call it a harp. Uh, so the Radu spots them, approaches them, and he's like, hey, uh, here's the deal. I'm a vampire. Uh, you give me music, I give you vampire powers. And Ash is like, yeah, uh, Ariel, let's listen to him. Uh, he, he's, he's talking sense over here. Uh, Ariel Ariel is very like not into this but but uh for now she, she's incredibly stupid and so uh Radu bites Ash and Ash is on the ground bleeding cuz apparently like if the vampire doesn't give some of the vampire blood to the person he just bit they just die rather than turn I guess question mark Yeah um, I know they have to feed from like the master vampire right. that bit them Well <laughs> Ash is on the ground bleeding out, and Ariel, who just saw this, just runs over and kneels down in front of him, also right in front of Radu, which allows Radu to bite her. And so now they have to choose, like, you bleed out or you become a vampire. Those are your options right now. And so they agree to be vampires. Uh, Radu kind of, they're, they're unhappy, even though Ash very, like, very obviously wanted this. Like, Ash chose this, but he's immediately, like, displeased with everything. Uh, there's some ver very strange and constantly shifting, like, motives and goals in this movie. Uh, um, we should also point out that Radu here, um, obviously, Anders Hove is an old man now. He's not, you know, in his early 30s or whatever when these first subspecies movies came out. He Radu does not look like the Radu that we've come to to know throughout the first four movies it's like they're trying to slowly because they they make some sort of like explanation that over time like the i guess they're aging differently or something but it looks like they're trying to make radu kind of get to his sort of more classic subspecies form yeah but i also felt that uh, anders hove is probably an old man who's like i'll only do this if i don't have to wear all this crappy makeup <laughs> like don't put it on my face which, and they were trying to come up with some reason which is going to be weird because I feel like we're jumping ahead, but I feel like this is purposely like setting up another prequel movie. Uh, it, so like you would think he would have to have his makeup on for that, but we'll get there. Uh, so uh, Radu is living with Ash and Ariel. Time passes, and Ariel is completely given into her bloodlust. Like Radu says, she is mad with like she she wants the blood big time, uh, and so she is just like feasting on a woman in the background. Meanwhile, like, Ash is just dead inside. Like, he's just, like, standing there. And Radu is like, Ash, you know, tell me what you need and I will provide for you. And he's like, I crave music. And Radu's like, fuck yeah, finally. I'm finally going to have music. Because uh, turns... that's the thing, that they didn't want to play for him. That's yeah. the whole thing. Like, Radu turned them and they refused to play their instruments because they were so pissed off about what had happened to him. Well, now Ash is willing but uh, unfortunately, he's dead inside, so his muse is gone, and so he can't he he can't uh, he can't play anymore. Um, more time passes. Ash and and Ariel and Radu continue to just kind of exist together as, as frenemies, and then all of a sudden, a a new character named Diane shows up, and Diane is another Diane is another vampire hunter. And her mom was also a sorcerer of some sort because she has magic power. She can just like phase through a gate, even though she is human. Uh, she shows up. She she attacks Radu and and uh, whatever Ash and Ariel. And Radu immediately like just overpowers her and bites her, and they all feed on yeah. her. He's uh, like, "You have no power here." I mean, that's the one good thing he's done so far. I mean, he <laughs> I guess he might have just immediately fucked up the vampire hunter yeah so he immediately overpowers this vampire hunter the vampire hunter has like this magic knife and she says that on the night that you were stolen from your mother like the the crusaders also took this knife and this knife is capable of actually killing you um well that's the thing right because they like when radu was born i don't know if we we mentioned this but when radu was born the prophecy was that he was going to kill his father so that yeah. radu would be the one that would kill king daddy and I think the the Crusaders took him, and it was kind of like it, I always go back to Star Wars. It reminds me of like a Revan sort of situation, right? You have like the the bad guy, and then like the Jedi kind of brainwash him into becoming this great Jedi, and then he realizes, oh shit, I'm actually the Sith Lord the entire time. Um, it seems similar similar to that in some ways, but I I do think it's kind of interesting that like Radu 
you know, and, and that's one one critique I will have of all these full moons, and we'll get to it with the Puppet Master. You know this critique. I hate it that they turn, like, the puppets good guys. I just, I, I hate it uh, when, when they do that. And to me, this all this was another movie where it felt like, geez, Renu, you know, why couldn't you just kept him a bad guy villain the entire time? Why does he have to be this good guy that is then turned and goes back and I, I don't, I, don't like he, I mean, he, that didn't bother me. I mean, I'm fine with like bad guys becoming good guys in movies, but he's only like a good guy for like five minutes. So like, he, like he spent the vast majority of his life as, as a bad guy. Cause he, when he becomes a vampire, he goes all in. Like there's no like lingering goodness that he's fighting about or that he's fighting against. He's just kind of like, I guess I'm a vampire now. I better go eat people. That's true, but I still hate the fact that we even <laughs> saw him as a good person. Like, fuck uh, that. Yeah. I, I feel like we barely saw him as a good person. Uh, I feel like the first 30 minutes were him as a good person. I feel like the, he became bad like much quicker, but whatever. Because it goes all the way to the point when, uh, when Denise Duff vamps out on him, and then we don't really see him truly become bad, bad vampire until he, a little bit after that. So there's still quite, there's still quite a bit of time. In this right, movie, well, where he's, I think, I think he's he spent more more bad than than good, and I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, but while Radu is eating the vampire hunter, uh, uh, Ash and Ariel like steal his magic knife, the the knife that can kill him, and they leave. So they just abandon their master, uh, and then we get like another time skip where uh, where Radu is now he's been hunting for. It, it, Tell, let me know if I'm filling in the blank, or if, if I'm missing something, because this movie is, it jumps around a lot, and it's hard to keep track of. Uh, did, you know, they, they leave, and then it's him, you fast forward, eventually, like, he comes across him, because he's, like, searching for yeah, them Yeah, so that's, that's what it's like, did, did he do anything between the point where they leave and he finds them again? I don't think right, so. If, if, they, if he did, clearly it wasn't important, because we don't remember it. Uh, so like another, like he says 300 years go by. So 300 years he's been on his own, but has also been searching for, uh, for, for his fledglings and he finds them and the fledgling fledglings are like, Oh shit. Uh, Radu's back. Uh, what do we do? Well, let's take her to our new master. And it turns out that, uh, that the, the two of them, uh, Ash and Ariel have pledged their service to some vampire queen that lives in this town. And in exchange for their servitude, she gives them protection. I wonder who that could be. Yeah, what what uh, female vampire has been missing from the movie for a significant por- uh, portion of the time so far? So Radu is like, you know, take me to your new master. I, I wish to meet her. <laughs> now, Radu <laughs> looks so weak. Like, he he's like a shriveled up old man. Like, he's, he's completely covered up. He's like, take me to your master, whatever. I did not buy the fact that these two like young virile vampires could not overpower power this guy. I mean, they're basically like holding him while he's there. There, are, there are rules to this. Well, well, no, because we've seen Radu murder multiple <laughs> masters. Are are you oh, saying God. that there are plot holes in the subspecies story? I am, I am shocked. I'm saying uh, Blood Rise is not tying up the loose ends that I needed to tie up. Is what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> So uh, 300 years go by, Radu runs into his fledglings again, fledglings again, and he asks them, like, take me to your new master, I would like to meet her. And he goes into this crypt, and this is the the crypt that uh, I guess Ash was living in, in, in part four. <clears throat> and uh turns out the queen vampire is Helena. And Radu's shit. like, oh shit, like, I, I've been searching my entire life for you. <laughs> Like so, there's like it, there, the Radu narrates the entire movie, and he says repeatedly that like even even when things were like going good, even when I like didn't completely hate my life, like I like you know when I had Ash and Ariel to keep me company, like I'm still haunted by visions and dreams of Helena. Radu is obsessed with Helena at this point, uh, so yeah. he meets Helena again, and uh, Helena's like, thank you, you know, you gave me the bloodstone way back when, and that has served me well, it, it's the only reason I, I've survived this long, uh, I, I, I put the, the sword of Laertes, or what's, what's the sword called? Sword of Laertes, yeah. Okay, well, it, it, the sword, the, the sword that came up out of nowhere in the previous movies is in this, and she's, she says that, um, you know, your, your dad eventually, like, life, he just hated his life and he asked me to kill him. So he's downstairs in the, in the super basement with the sword in his chest. He has been laid to rest. Uh, 
it's so random. It's like what? It's like they just wrote. Uh, they just wrote like King Daddy and, and Stefan out of the movie for a large portion of it. Um, but uh, he he wants to. I'm trying to like so many things happen here. I'm gonna try to summarize them. Uh, he strikes a deal with with um with Helena, and the deal is uh, uh she gets Ash, and he gets Ariel, and she's also, not happy about that. Yeah, she doesn't want to go with old yeah. man Radu. Well, Helena's okay with it. Helena wants wants Ash. Right, Ariel's not. And Ariel wants to go with Radu, or is told to go with Radu, and she's not happy about it. Um, and what does Radu get out of this? Like, access to the Bloodstone again? Which we've established he doesn't need? Well, I think he when he first got there, he was like, yo, you gotta give me my fledglings back, sort of thing. Like, these aren't yours. And then... Yeah, they they struck the deal so that he could sort of be with Helena, but he also got one of his fledglings back. So she yeah. was willing to give up one. And then, but he through so this whole time, even when they're making this deal, at least in one of the scenes, you know, Helena's like, you know, shut shut our area up or whatever like that and he's like you can't tell me what to do i'm radu i'm way more powerful than you i'm like what the hell is the dynamic at play here it does not make any sense i I think like like ash was gonna go to helena ariel was gonna go to radu and helena and radu would also share a master certain fledgling relationship with helena as the master uh but uh like Ariel goes through like six movies worth of like character development and motivation in like eight minutes. Because I'm I'm gonna summarize her like what she does like when we're done here. But just to move on with the movie, uh, Helena takes Ash and gives him the Bloodstone and says drink from it, and that gives him his muse back. And he starts like playing the piano really aggressively, and and Helena doesn't like this whatsoever. So the like the bad music is shown to like weirdly hurt vampires in this yeah. movie. Because uh, uh, Ariel blew her flute or whatever, and basically yeah. it was like it was, it was horrible, horrible sound. Flute yeah. blowing that that hurt Radu. Yeah! Uh, but what? While, while Helena is off with Ash, uh, uh, Radu takes uh, Ariel down to the super basement. Uh, with their, which they're forbidden to go to, but Radu is like, I, I, what I seek is forbidden, and he goes and he finds his dad in a in a coffin with a sword through his chest, and he pulls the sword out, and uh, and 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 King Daddy comes back to life. Yeah, it, when you remove the stake, the vampire resurrects. Everyone knows that. He's fucking dead. What the hell's wrong with you? you? You pull out a stake, and the vampire resurrects. Everybody knows that. Who the fuck gave you a stake? So he pulls the the, the sword out, and King Daddy's like. Oh, I'm back. You rescued me. You know, how, what is your name? How can I reward you? And he's like, uh, I'm Radu. Stab, 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 stab. It's a- yeah, I like that nobody recognizes Radu. Helena didn't recognize Radu when he walked in the door. His own dad doesn't recognize Radu when he, when he sees like, yeah. you would think like, oh yeah, that's my son. No, I've... I think they're like trying to create sympathy for Radu throughout this whole movie. I'm like, it didn't work. I don't feel sympathy <laughs> for Radu whatsoever. So all these little moments of, you know, uh, but I, I did like that idea that he would just do, he would, he would revive his dad just to kill him again. I thought that was a cool concept. Yeah, so it he, wasn't executed well. Uh, yeah. He, the, the, the sword is just in King daddy and then Radu just stabs him again with the sword and ultimately leaves him there. So Radu, I don't think accomplished anything. Was this supposed to be symbolic? Because clearly the dad therapeutic isn't dead. is what I'd say. But therapeutic, right? Because clearly the dad's not dead. Because Radu actually kills him for really reals at the beginning of the first movie. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, they all go back upstairs. Uh, <laughs> this movie doesn't make any sense at all. They all go back upstairs, and now it's uh, it, it's all four of them: uh, Ariel and Ash and Helena and Radu. And I don't. So for whatever reason, like Radu and Helena get into like a fight. Is is does Radu say something like, you know, I 
I want to be yours, you know, I want to be your lover, your yeah. consort, and she rejects. I think, I think it's yeah, I think. she rejects him. All right, yeah. so Ra- Radu shoots a shot, and she Hel- tells she tells him she's like, "You're hideous to me." She has this whole like little monologue, of, like you are the grossest, nastiest thing ever. Yeah, and I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> yeah, so like, so like, uh, like seventy years old, seventy year old like Anders Hove, she was really hot for, but seventy year old Anders Hove with vampire makeup on, she's not about. Uh, yeah. So she, Radu and, and Helena fight and Radu like breaks her neck, but doesn't just like break her neck. He like does like a full like exorcist one eight or three sixty with her head and she's still not dead. She's still talking, even though her head should not be attached anymore. Uh, but she's that like, look cool. I thought it mean... really cool, but she's like, you know, what are you doing? Like you can't hurt your master. And Radu's like, I have no master and kills her, but she does like a final, she gives a final curse. Like, uh, you know, basically like I will, I will haunt you for forever, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like my spirit will resurrect and cause you pain. Um, Ash tries to get Ariella to, tries to get Ariel to flee because they're like, oh, the bloodstone's here. We can take the bloodstone and go. And she's like, no, Radu is my master. Like six minutes ago, she hated him. Uh, but Ash, I think Ash ultimately just like leaves. I don't remember what happens to Ash. He just kind of like yeah. goes away towards the end of the movie. He's like... Just- peace out yeah it now gotta go be in vampire journals yeah oh but they do they do mention that this is the same crypt that ash was living in 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 part four because they're because even i don't know when exactly this part of the movie is taking place but even at this time they're like oh yeah we run a brothel and casino and that gives us money and and it must be in bucharest i don't know if they ever mentioned that they're in bucharest but it must be that they're in bucharest Anyways, Ash leaves, and so now it's just Ariel and Radu, and they leave the crypt, and Radu is like, I don't, Radu is like, you know, uh, if you want to leave me again, like, I'm not going to stalk you, like, I will set you free, and Ariel is like, if you're giving me my freedom, then I choose to not be your fledgling, instead I will be your consort, so his vampire girlfriend. Ariel, if you choose to abandon me. I will not stalk you. This night I set you free. If I'm truly free, Radu, I would want to be your fledgling. I will be your consort. Eight minutes ago, I timed it. I went back and got the timestamps. At at one hour and five minutes, uh, Ariel says, we are not Radu's property to trade. We are not his property to trade. Silence her, Radu. Like, we are we are not his. She is disgusted by the idea of having anything to do with him. And then uh, Helena yells at Ari- yells at Radu, is like, shut up your fledgling because she's annoying me. And, and, and then immediately, this is seconds after her saying, like, I am not his property. She's like, Radu is my master. Shut up or he'll take you out. Spite your tongue, girl. You are Radu's plaything. You mean nothing to me. Nor you to me. Radu is my lord and master. May he rain bloody hell upon you. And now. That's so weird. And, and now she is set free. And not only does she not want to leave, but she wants to be his consort. So eight minutes ago, eight, she was horrified by him, wanted nothing to do with him. Now she wants to be his girlfriend. Um, but they don't get to have a happy ending because Diane comes back. Diane, <laughs> like, Radu. <laughs> Radu, just shows us so, yeah, Radu, it's so funny. Like, what is going on in this fucking movie? Yeah, so like, so back backing up a little bit, when, when uh, vampire hunter Diane showed up, Radu bit her and fed on her. And he like turned her into a vampire, but he said the same thing that Daddy, that King Daddy said previously, was like, "I, uh, you know, I have turned you, but I reject you as a fledgling, and without a master, you will perish." Well, Diane didn't perish. She's been kicking ass for two or three hundred years now. She is now a vampire who hunts vampires, which is what I thought Radu was going to be at the beginning of the movie. So Diane shows up and kills, uh, and and kills Ariel. Uh, yeah. so like her, her six movies worth of plot development that just happened in eight minutes. She's, she's dead. Yeah. Uh, Ariel's Cause, cause dead. she, she, Diane 
says like, hey, you know, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to kill you, Radu. I'm just going to kill, I'm going to make you suffer for the rest of your yeah. like, eternal life. I, d- does he say something like, I, you know, you, it's forbidden to hurt your master or something like that? Because she tells he him. He always says that. Yeah, he she... always says it's forbidden to harm your master while he then goes and he's like, oh, I got no master of my own. He just murders any vampire yeah. he wants. Well, she, he tells Diane that you can't kill me, whether she's incapable or whether she's not allowed. I don't know. But her response is, I don't want to kill you. Like, I have basically the rest of eternity to make your life a living hell. And so she's like, just get the fuck out of here. I'm going to go into this crypt and I'm going to kill all the vampires down there. And you're just going to fucking leave. And Radu fucking leaves. And that's the end of the movie. Like, why doesn't Radu do something to her right there? I don't know. I, I know in previous movies is like, you know, it's we cannot harm our own kind, right? I mean, he always says, like, you can't destroy your own kind or do anything that's forbidden. Everything's forbidden until it's not forbidden for Radu. It's like, why, again, why does Radu not just take care of the problem yeah. immediately? Immediately. He okay, doesn't. The, the actual end of the movie is a, a another, like, narration with footage from, I guess, like, subspecies 2. It's like it's Radu recognizing that Michelle from the previous four movies looks just like Helena. But in time, the shadow of Helena, my master and creator, would fulfill her curse and torment me to madness. And so I think I think it's like that type because we had another question is like why does Radu care about uh, Denise Duff in these previous movies? And I, I think yeah. this is meant to answer that. Like she looks mm-hmm. just like Helena, and like, Radu is obsessed with that. Of course, that's, that's classic. Not, that's, that's not mentioned in the, in the previous films whatsoever. Yeah. It's uh, a classic horror trope, right? Like I felt like even in the original, like Dracula, right? Even Bram Stoker's Dracula, right? It was like uh, he fell in love with Winona Ryder because she looked just like his wife back in the day. So it's like the Ted Nicola was trying to bring in some like classic vampire tropes into this. The execution of it is awful though. Like it doesn't <laughs> come across that way at all. And it's, it's, I don't know this particular film. I, I found, I, I think it's the worst one, honestly. And, um, you know, I, I obviously wasn't a big fan of three, um, I really didn't like four. I really disliked five. And the reason why I disliked five is I think it's cool to bring the band back together, get the band back together again. Right. You have all these people that made all these movies 25, 30 years ago. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like a nostalgia trip. Let's bring them all together. I felt like there was no thought put into the script or story of this at all. And if there was, it was far too ambitious for them to be able to, to, like just from a screenwriting standpoint this seemed so stupid the in terms of how they set this whole thing up um how like like you said it's just jumping from thing to thing to thing there's nothing really connecting all of it it just kind of you know i sort of joked i think in part two in our second episode this is kind of like a walking simulator franchise because people just walk around a lot and that's what this felt like people just walking around until they are in a cool uh, crypt set location and then they do some talking and that's all this is is talking talking and walking that is the entire <laughs> that could that's what subspecies franchise can be summed up as talking and walking it's all people do and radu you know, I did not like the fact that he was a good person first and then he's turned to evil. I don't buy that. I don't buy the turn. I don't buy. I I honestly, I didn't even think Denise Duff was very good in this movie. I thought she overacted like in the two and three. I thought she was fantastic. This it's just it's overacting and it's just they're chewing the scenery and it it's not good. Too many characters. I, I don't give a shit about any of these people. It's just it's bad. Subspecies five blood rise is bad. I'll turn it over to you. Uh, this is going to shock you. I think this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to be clear. This movie is not good. Not good whatsoever. <laughs> so it's like the best of a bad thing, but of all five subspecies movies, 
this is the one that I was most interested in and that held my attention the most. Like when I watched Subspecies 1, that movie is an hour and 80 minutes. I was pausing and going to do something else so often it took me four hours to get through that movie. And like the other ones were much the same way. This movie is not good, but I was interested in what was happening here. I felt like Radu actually did some things. Uh, I felt like if anything, like it was just, it was too ambitious. It needed more time. And I want to be, I did not want it to have more time. I think instead they should have just trimmed back the script a little bit. But uh, I would. We got subspecies six. We're going to have to add that's, more, that, right? That's, that's what I think. There, there's got to be subspecies six because uh, uh, they get, Diane has to be fought. And also something's got to happen with King Daddy because King Daddy can't be dead. He dies. The, yeah. He dies for good at the beginning of the part of part one. Um, not a good movie. I still think subspecies as a franchise is zero and five right now. But if I had to watch another subspecies movie again, <laughs> it's gonna be this one. And I, I'm as shocked as you are. Wow. And, well, chalk it up as subspecies <laughs> five as a prequel that you enjoyed more than the original series. So. Well, low bar low bar but but you did enjoy the I prequel did. more than the original wow I mean, that, that's an indictment of how shitty the the, the ones happening in present day are uh i didn't yeah. like the movie but i was interested in this movie and entertained by this movie more than any of the other ones okay i think that. I guess what I've learned watching the subspecies movies, and we'll probably save our overall thoughts on the franchise when we do vampire journals next. And after we've gotten the whole story that we know. Um, But I think right now I'm just like, I, I just like the visuals of subspecies. I think I'm just the aesthetics of the first two movies and even the third to a certain extent. I just love the mood and the atmosphere and, and the kind of look of those things. But in terms of the plot, the characters, this is a trash franchise and I, that yeah. pains me to say that because I, I always considered myself a subspecies fan until I've now revisited them for this show. This franchise. And I, I think especially this movie, because this movie was so packed with people trying to get their character out, like Ariella, like disgusted by Radu to cl- willingly claiming him as her master to, like wanting to support him in his fight against Hel- Helena and then agreeing to like, not just be his servant, but his consort like of her own free will in the span of eight minutes. Like there had to be a way to clean that up. Like this, yeah, this franchise as a whole, like needed like, a script doctor. They need another writer to come in and kind of like plug things up a little bit. I think subspecies five with like the benefit of like someone else taking another swing at the script, I think five could have actually been good. I don't feel that way about any of the rest of them. I think what they could have done to make five much, much better was sort of, if they're going to tell this story, start this story with, because ultimately it's, it's a love story between Radu and Ariella. Cause at the very end, when he sort of, you know, says willingly, Oh, you know, I'll let you go. And then she's like, no, I'll be with you. It's, there's a love story there that needed to be developed uh, and he where says, you get... like uh, Ariel or Ariel was my redemption. Like he was yeah. uh, turn over a new leaf for her, but we don't see anything. So it would have been great to start this movie with Radu in classic Radu form hunting, you know, the brother and the sister turning Ariel. The movie is her sort of like rebelling against him. Then this whole stuff with Helene comes into play. And then, Ariel and their relationship turns and you could have a flashback sequence within that story of him telling Ariel what, you know, about his birth and what had happened to try to sort of garner that sympathy for her character towards him and the audience towards him. And then when Diane kills her at the end, then there's the big tragedy of Radu, which causes Radu to go full evil right if that's a story you want to tell then tell that story don't tell the first 30 minutes of this movie you know where ariel's not even in it 
she doesn't show up to like the 28 minute mark. Cause I was looking, cause I was like, when is this like act two, the beginning of act two is when she first shows up and then she disappears at the end of act two. And then we go into act three and it's the, the actual story is so poorly constructed, but I agree with you. There was a good story here. Had they focused on Radu and Ariel and their relationship, and then the tragedy that would have happened after Radu, what Radu caused in the past, creating Diane or whatever, came back to haunt him and caused him the problems. You know what I just realized about Ariel? So Ariel gets like just stabbed, like not even staked, just stabbed by by Diane with this. I don't, she has like this weird like crossbow looking thing that she doesn't actually shoot she just gets so diane just or diane just stabs ariel and and and, and radu is like i just left her out in the sun to die like three other things in this movie just had like the thing pulled out of them and they came back to life just fine so i think radu may have jumped the gun uh radu you know could have just like carried her into the tomb and she would have been fine i don't know are you it saying Radu is a, a stupid character? Is a, that what you're telling yeah, me? Weirdly, you know, I know we were very protective of him on, on this show, but yeah, he's kind of a fucking idiot. Yeah. Uh, or maybe, maybe this is just really poorly written. It's poorly written. Yeah, I 100% poorly written, and it saddens me. Do we do we have any answers about the Bloodstone? There's a scene. No. Where, there's a scene where when Radu, when he comes back, when he meets Helena for the second time, and he's like, you know, super old and starting to look like the Radu that we know, he he drinks from the Bloodstone, and then like the screen goes wobbly, and like the and the impression I got was like he's just fucking tripping balls right now. So like, if you told me that the reason he wants the Bloodstone is because it's like it has like drug or addiction properties, I think that's fucking well, stupid. But I go with it at this point well the franchise has said that because carl said that carl said when radu drinks it it's like a drug to him that was all the way back in the very first subspecies but that's the thing it's like okay well it's just it, it's not really emphasized throughout the entire series so Bloodstone you know we just like vampire heroin is that all it is is, is radu guess... looking to get his next fix and that's the, that's the plot of subspecies from start to finish. I think so, because clearly drinking from the bloodstone, I mean, Helena says, well, it's kept me alive all this time. Like, how? Why? Like you said, Steve, clearly with other vampires, clearly Radu doesn't mind just going and eating people, drinking their blood, killing them. Clearly Helena's got a brothel and all that stuff where she can get free free people anytime she wants. What is so special? To, why, why has the Bloodstone kept her alive this whole time? Why? Why does she need it? Why does anybody maybe, need it? Maybe <laughs> we'll find needs out it. in subspecies six, because I assume they're making another one. <sighs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are not hot on this movie, but Steve liked it more than me, which it's is shocking. Best. It's the best of all of them, and they're all terrible. It's like, False. you know, it's, like, it's two like, is the best. It's like the turd that had the most gold paint on it. Two is the best. Two is the best. But that's it. That's all we have for the subspecies franchise proper. Now, next week, we are going to roll into Vampire Journals, which is the weird spinoff with with Ash. And then we're going to roll into, what, 14 Puppet Master movies (laughs) all the way through. That's a cool torch. I need to get one of those one-to-one scale replicas. Uh, they always sell Jester every once in a while. Full Moon always has like a Valentine's Day 50% off sale. And every time I see that Jester up there, I'm like, I should get that. And I never do. One of these days, I'm going to pull the trigger on that. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Tell us what you think about the subspecies movies. Are we way off base on these? Are we missing something very obvious no. here? It's Let us know. else that's wrong. I think so. I, I think so. So that's it. We will see you guys on the next episode of Full Moon Fridays. Catch you later.